Left, you've got speed and flashiness, one of the fanciest Zergverse players, uh, Zergverse Protoss players in the world. He's a player who has been saying this matchup's gotten more difficult, it's harder. He's running into obstacles, he knows he needs to step up his game. In the bottom right side of Hardlet, representing Basilisk, put your hands together for Rainer. Fighting for his tournament life right now. And in the top left of hard lead for Team DKZ, he is the Blue Protoss Hero. <laughs> Hero successfully gets a block off in game one. The mini game that does set the pace for the matchup, one which I feel like Hero's had the worst end of recently, because sometimes Reyna will go for a very fast hatchery to preempt the block. And he's usually been guessing when to do that correctly. But this time, Hero goes across at the start, stops him from taking the hatchery, and Rainer is forced to defend an exposed expansion. Yeah, there was a difference of just even that little bit of an opener as far as whether or not Hero probe scouted at all, actually. And then if he actually did uh, particular timings on it, all changed up. Again, in the very <laughs> many games that they have played in the last three weeks, a lot of it extended series, very long games, where stamina also was an issue. Uh, this time around, in a best of three, I mean, we might get a couple of long games, long scrappy games, maybe even one very just late games EVP, although a little less likely between these two. But what you don't need, I suppose, in terms of preparing for an hour, two hour, three hour series, you do have to prepare for just the extreme amount of stress that is on both of them, but particularly Rainer, who has had disappointing results for him. Totally understandable losses, and he did not look bad at all, as the desk said, but it is disappointing for him, especially because he really wanted to show up after Atlanta was disappointing for him. Indeed, he put on his, uh, his practice hat and he went to work for this event. But there's also, you know, that mythology has been growing around Rainer the famous hard practice grind he did to win his world championship to make it to three world championship finals in a row, 2019 to 2022, barely missing out on getting back-to-back -back world championships. Of course, that three to four loss to Serral in 2022 yeah. does, uh, does haunt him a little bit. It was so very close right here in Katowice. And uh, now he is, of course, going to be looking to make a deep run. But I feel like Reyna does his best work when he's behind, when he's on the ropes, and when everyone's counting him out. I saw him earlier. And he said, you know, I went and saw the, uh, the the forums, the Reddit threads, the posts. A lot of people saying I'm washed. He's like, I am fired up. It is it's fuel for me. I'm loving it. He said, you know, that makes me just so, like, I'm so eager to prove everybody wrong. Yeah. And I guess on the side of Hero, I don't know if he actually accepts this fate, but he has been dubbed the Hero of Protoss to actually get to the semifinals last year and then the finals of our Dream Hack in Atlanta a year ago. Um, not the most recent one, but before that, uh, he has been dubbed the hero of Protoss, and that is a lot to live up to. And even more so after this recent year was rather disappointing up until, again, that Master Coliseum, where fortunately he was able to defeat Raynor, although you can argue that Raynor should have won both best ofs. There was a little bit of a throw in there, many would say. I mean, but, I think uh, that goes both ways, though. I think hero yeah, exactly. games as well. That's just a hero BBZ. Hero will get ahead and let it just slip through his fingers, but he'll also claw back some of the most insane comebacks. Yes, exactly, 100%. It's all kind of condensed into one adrenaline pumping best of three here. We do have continued kind of normalcy for this matchup we were talking, guys. The Stargate opener into the third Nexus, which is something that Rainer still actually has to be very on point about scouting, right? This all can look very normal, but then Hero is actually doing a lot of like fake natural gases and going into this really surprising three base uh, charge level and there's a card to call it three base but that's what it was there's a lot to worry about when it comes to even this setup as the charge all in was represented the surprise targets were represented the blink without the forge was represented uh, as well as uh, I don't think it did a disruptive drop but obviously Twilight Council can come into play in the future not this game as far as resonating glaives but that was also giving Rainer issues there's just so much Rainer is side and go for a plus one melee build himself Forge came down before the Twilight. Usually it's the other way around. That makes me think it's going to be a charge build. Plus one does take a fair bit longer to upgrade than charge. So you do want to get that started ahead of time. And Rain is going for that plus one melee as you 
said, he's defended fantastically well so far, damaging an Oracle heavily for just two drone losses. Stalker will go down in the wall. A good snipe for Rainer. Well worth it. I mean, I was going to say, adept walls like that are actually kind of tricky. They do kind of change uh, the, the unit spacing when they turn to attack. That uh, was seen a lot back in 2020, God of Eats, actually. So one little pesky ling gets in. And even though it could have been worse, you know, 10 lings dancing around there, killing probes would have been obnoxious. That ling did see all the information that nothing else could. Now, you don't actually know what is coming out of that Twilight Council. And it is, in fact, going to be blink. A lot of gateways come down to create some nice walls as well. Very good use of the map terrain. Nero was displaying that in the previous series too. And we'll see if he actually tries to be a little aggressive with the Blink Stalkers, uh, perhaps even, you know, intimidating Rainer to a certain extent. But with those plus one melee lings, you really got to be careful about how you use your Blink Stalkers. Currently just triple Oracle and five Adepts looking to threatening Rainer, maybe not actual mineral line, but hoping that it causes Rainer to maybe overproduce army units, underproduce drones. Absolutely not happening here as Rainer just pumped out 10 of them. Nice, confident, greedy play for Rainer as well. His Roach Horn only going down after the six minute mark. He did already have a Bane Lean S before that though. So he was ready to deal with any sort of explosive Adept pressure. So going surround on the Adepts. The Adepts will take a few of them out. Adepts aren't the most important unit as we go to these later stages of the game, but uh, still nice to keep them alive as a blocking and defensive unit. And Templar Archives going down as well as Charge. The Robo is up, plus two attacks on the way. Yeah. This is awesome. This looks like Hero is basically playing in a model Charge Storm style with a handful of Blink Stalkers. So it's really, it looks like a Blink style, but it's not really. It's just a handful of them for defense. I do like, I, I wonder if he's still gonna play this in that ultra aggressive multitasking way that he can do uh, without the Templar Archives, without the Archons, which he might add much, much later in the game. Uh, this time around, adding in the potential Archons while also doing an aggressive Stalker attack with the War Prism on the way and Charge and Storm. I mean, this wow. is... <laughs> Theoretically, this can really work out. The Stalker's pressure, they also do some scouting. You expand behind it, you get all of your technology behind it as well. And it's kind of like a one, two, three, four, five, six punch as the Protoss gets everything and the Zerg feels like they're constantly under pressure. But then on the other hand, it feels like if Hero miscontrols or is a little too out there, then he's got too much invested in things uh, that, that won't necessarily help him. But uh, that's what we're going to be finding out here. Can Rainer find a time to strike? Doesn't look like he's looking for one. He's getting an invitation pit. I think Hero might have studied that Showtime series from yesterday because he's being very light in his aggression, just poking and prodding. And the wall offs are fantastic, uncharacteristically defensive. And I think this is fan like, it's just such a good way to play against your image. You know, you go in here as Rainer, what are you expecting? Well, it's Hero, he's gonna throw the kitchen sink at me, he's gonna be in my face. There's gonna be weird sorts of zealot timings. None of that has happened. It has nope. been the most passive poking with Adepts and Oracles and Stalkers, no over commitments, and Hero is simply trying to take a fourth with Stalker Storm, one of the most defensive styles in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, he's, he's really playing cautiously with the units, not overextending, and you know, honestly, some of the ways that he has thrown games or lost games in general, he really is using just a little bit of pressure, the two-pronged or even three-pronged, you could argue with Oracles, Warp Prism, and Stalkers, and then getting to a very solid macro game behind it. Of course, Rainer not too far behind. Eight drones, five bases just about, and a hive 80% finished. We could have some action coming shortly. Even additional Vipers could be coming out too, but, you know, for what they've displayed and what Hero especially displayed in a best of five and a best of seven previously, he is playing even differently still. Yeah, Rain is going ultras, and that's somewhat predictable. Both Solar and Rainer were going ultras uh, pretty much every game against Hero in the last tournaments they played against. And Hero is so prepared for that because he's pumping Immortals one at a time consistently. He's got a lot of Storm here, which is very scary for your Ling Bane. You've got to dodge those beautiful spreads from Rainer. Uh, just be warned, everyone, you may need to take some yeah. sickness medication because Rainer's first person view is absolutely hectic. Oh, that Stasis Trap blocking his Zergling run by nice catch there for Hero. <laughs> I'm actually uh, trying to cast without looking currently. There we go. We actually do have a War Prism in the main base, which Rainer is already responding to. Meanwhile, also worrying about the attack of the front. And Hero is even grabbing plus one air behind this potential composition change in the future. Banelings looking to target those High Templars. I'm going to be able to find it, but they merge into Archons anyway, which are going to obviously tank a lot more Banelings. The Immortals do go down. Perhaps Hero not necessarily paying attention or thinking oh. that that is worth it if he can continue with the momentum. Zell 
from the main base getting surrounded. Warprism was taken out, and Hero is actually still pushing on the front lines, just the bare minimum units to do so. The supply is so close. This is a scary moment for Rainer. If he can't hold on, this could be game ending. But Hero also may be overextending. Archon's a very good one. Storm in there to help clear those lings. Very nice. And I think a very wise pullback for Hero. Oh! <laughs> Fancy a duck from Rainer. That was a delicious catch on that Immortal. Yeah, out of left field. They didn't expect that one, but that is an important unit taken out of the equation. And as you were saying, the supply is remaining very, very even, which obviously we favor towards the Protoss. The quality of your army, especially with so many Archons, just continues to increase. The Viper not ready to go again, but oh, the Blinding Cloud was effective enough. Actually, that was absolutely perfect. Not going to get a spe second spell, but if that does push the Archon Immortal army back, then so be it. That's good enough. Enough for now. Rainer does also need to worry about this actual transfer of compositions. Plus one air is going to finish for Hero and second Stargate, a Fleet Beacon too. So at any moment, he could start building up to that army in which Rainer has very little anti-air. There's no Spy, there's no Hydras either. But of course, for the Protoss perspective, it's tricky to actually safely get to that point. They don't want to be overwhelmed on the ground before the carrier numbers get good enough. Hero has to be wary. Ground is his strength, it's his forte. Air is not. Getting a few carriers is always a good idea because the Zerg is forced to diversify their composition. The Zerg supply problem haunts them in the late game, which is how do they have enough worker for uh, supply for drones, queens, army that fights ground, and army that fights air. It's a very difficult, nice snipe into Recall. He's gonna lose uh... two Archons, so it's not cheap. Yeah, no, that wasn't cheap whatsoever. Uh, a little unfortunate, of course, but with both players still solidly on very good economies. Hero going up to five. Rainer's still on five, actually. Might be looking toward the six soon, but pretty solid. It's going to be able to replace that. I am just getting increasingly more worried about Rainer just not having a true answer to the carriers. I mean, there's not even really a backup answer. I suppose Queen's going to be pulled to the front line, but... Or, well, honestly, the other thing that can happen is that you continue to bombard the air toss player with ground units and yeah. basically keep them on their back foot so long that you then can successfully transition into a spire. But, uh, the, you know, the more that Rainer gets a scout on this, the better I would feel. <laughs> and maybe he will eventually pick up on what Hero is putting down. Certainly will, and these carriers make an appearance right now. Plus two air weapons on the way. Hero crisp on those upgrades. He's really bringing the fire to Rainer, not letting Rainer get situated. 90 workers for Hero, more Zealot Archon with just a few High Templar and Immortals mixed in. Storm, amazing against the Ling Bane. Immortals, good against the Ultras. Archons are a decent, well-rounded buffer unit, but they do need other things backing them up to find efficiency. Yeah, there was at least one game in their previous series in which Hero definitely got ahead on the technology with the carriers, but Rainer was able to buy enough time on the ground. Can he do that once more? Trying to make a little bit of a surround, but it's a bit awkwardly timed. The bottom side of the Zerg army appears first. The top side of the Zerg army doesn't look particularly strong, and Rainer's supply is simply plus Vomiting Hero playing this first game to perfection. Bing, bang, boom. One, two, three, four, five. And he ends the game with a win and is ever closer to winning the series. What a devious way to start off the series. Hero there puts on his European pro player cosplay, plays Splink Stalker Storm, walling off his third into a defensive fourth base, and then just kind of goes up to the next step, Storm Immortal poking, Zealot Harass in the main, transitions to carriers behind it. Brilliant engagements and play by Hero. Yeah, it would be all too familiar to see Hero set up like this, but then get a little too overconfident with his stalkers. Yeah. Give that vulnerable opening onto then his fourth base, which he can't defend. And then Rainer controls the game from then on. But Hero absolutely shifting gears here, possibly, as you said, watching the previous ZVP from Rainer. And I really do think that that caught him off guard. I mean, he might have been matching some of the pacing to an extent, but obviously this late game didn't really look so great for Rainer. Um, but I think mentality-wise, Rainer had to shift multiple times, constantly reconfirming, no, you are doing this, no, you are yeah. doing this, no, you are doing this, and uh, probably set the pace very differently and see if Rainer can recover in this extremely important best of three. You know, Hero may have identified a, a particular or, or potential weakness with Rainer, which is predictability. In this matchup, Rainer relies on speed, precision, uh, his ability to get ahead uh, by defending harassment perfectly, doing his own run buys, and then just kind of beating you down. But 
there are very few surprises, unlike a guy like Dark, right, where Dark doesn't necessarily have the precision and the build orders as tight as Rainer, but you never know what he's going to do next. Are there going to be Nidus Worms in your main, Roaches and Queens <laughs> on your doorstep? It's always a big question mark, but Rainer may have hit a point where he's a tad too predictable in this matchup. It feels like Hero adapted very well to counter his playstyle in that game. Yeah, you might be right about that. Uh, it's it's going to be tough for Rainer to adjust mid-series, but uh, we've certainly seen it in the past from Rainer. He just really needs to uh, turn it on right here, right now, as we do head into Golden Aura. This will be potentially the final map of the series if this man in the bottom right for Basilisk doesn't get a W on the board. He is Rainer. And up here in the top left side, one game away from getting that 2-0 that would really cement him as an absolute force in this matchup. In the top left of the map, in the blue, it's DKZ's hero. As an Australian, it feels wrong saying DKZ. I feel like I should be saying DKZ. Yeah, sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I normally say the whole one, Dragon Crazy Gaming. Oh, because it just throws you off so much. Yeah. I have found myself wanting to say Zed because of you guys. It's It sounds cooler, doesn't it? No. Much cooler. Let's... No, it doesn't. Oh, Zed's way more bad. Zed G? Suddenly he doesn't rhyme? Zed G! No, that's, that's BS. That's not, that's not going to work for me. No, thank you. Zombie Grubster. And then I'm also like in America being like, it's 87 Fahrenheit. And all the Americans are like, why are you specifying? <laughs> just like bragging that you've been to other countries. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Everyone yells at me if I don't do that. Call them freedom freedom units and then, you know, shout out and make a, a bald eagle scream and they'll, they'll redeem you <laughs> in their eyes. It's fine. Which is always the uh, not bald eagle scream, actually. They always use something like a red-tailed falcon. Oh, yeah, because it yeah, sounds cooler, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. They, re they retconned it. They're like, cool. oh, yeah, this is totally the bald eagle scream, the sound of freedom. Yep. 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 Have you ever seen a bald eagle just looking right at a camera? It looks derpy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, completely off topic. We do have second game. Very important, actually. Like, seriously, you do not want to understate how important this is for Rainer because yeah. even if there is a way that he could get O2 here but then still bring it back if you're bringing it back from all of the still very intimidating players you have to face such as Dark uh, yeah which is the next match for Rainer and then even Cyan, Cyan yeah. has proved to be a potential thorn in the side for many of these players who expected to have him as the easy peasy uh, series we do have a stalker coming out first nice gas first opening for Hero he went for the block in game one was successful game two he uh, gets Rainer to play, of course, uh, lets Rainer, sorry, get away with the hatchery first, but he goes for both Stalker, a Stargate, and a slightly delayed Warp Gate. Even though we could afford it, just kind of gives off the illusion of, oh yeah, is it is it Stargate, is it not? And obviously make sure he has plenty of money to start the Stargate right on time. Hero uh, always one to mix up his openings, and I think this is going to be a bit more of a standard game. The Overlord out front, the base on this map, is such a menace. That pillar is so well placed. You see everything. Mm. So I think the first order of business is just fly the Oracle down here, spot the high ground, let the Stalker get rid of that, yep. and then you can secure your third and start harassing. Yeah, and whatever else you do have planned behind this, too. Um, that will blind Rainer, at least temporarily. But uh, I was also going to ask you about the... It's actually apparently just what he does, but Hero has been putting a pylon in his wall. Thus far, I haven't seen any Zergs trying to take advantage of that, obviously covering it now. It becomes very strong from this point on. So it, it is very definitely vulnerable early on, but it actually ends up being really nice. And because he always puts the choke point on the inside, well, usually he does, actually. Normally, you take the third on the left, in which case I really dislike the way he's placed this wall. Yeah. Okay, suboptimal wall placement in this one. I, the, the, the reason why it's actually a good wall doesn't make sense here. But remember, <laughs> Hero has never done the same wall twice. Yeah. Hero is yeah. a player who is one of, some would say disorganized. I would say a free-flowing chaotic genius. He's a man where you try to make him, you know, do the exact same build order and repeat, he'd go crazy. He's intuitive. He figures things out as he goes, and his wall offs uh, are not technical, but he makes them work. Yeah, he absolutely does there. It is once again going to be a triple oracle open of the two gases coming out of the natural, presumably going to be actually a mind from this point on. Anyway, you do have Rainer just continuing spread creep, build a couple of extra queens and drones. So sometimes 
games, you can kind of determine how well the Zerg is going to play based on how well their Oracle defense is. It was actually totally fine in the last game, yet Rainer still struggled looking fine in this one as Hero does slap down the Twilight Council and Forge at the same time. Still working a couple of additional adepts, could do a similar uh, pressure push, you know, just making them appear, getting ready to react, and then maybe pulling them back. This time with three adepts, probably? Not five. Interesting to see that pressure come out. Evo Chamber's a bit later this game for Rainer, but a similar style. Oh, is oh, it? Yeah. I mean, I really don't like him letting, you know, Hero just be too greedy like in that last game. Yeah. It looks scary in the late game, but uh, if you can get aggressive, that's the way to do it. And this looks like the setup for a German taxi. <laughs> exactly. We do have that Overlord speed on the way. The Roach Warren nice and fast. And oh, an Oracle gets taken out right there. And the Oracles can be extremely helpful for defending against these attacks. The Stasis Traps, the Pulsar Beam, if the Queens can't get the uh, can't get close enough. And um, a revelation, obviously, to actually get the scout and hopefully see this is coming before it hits you. Six drones did just go down, and the second Oracle barely survives that time. So it's going to mess with a little bit with the timing. Quick to try and replace that. Fourth base coming down for Rainer as well. Hero still does not actually see the technology in the natural. The Queens have been able to fend them off from that. Delicious harassment from Hero so far. Plenty of gateways blinking plus one. And everything I said about German taxis can be forgotten. He's, of course, gone melee upgrades. <laughs> yeah. He's just droning on up. He's, he's going towards a fourth base and really working his way upwards in the macro games. This looks like he's just checking that there's nothing tricky. He knows he's on elimination point right now. If he loses this series, he's, he's more, you know, more likely than not, he's going to be eliminated. So he's got to win this map in the next. He doesn't want to get caught by a surprise. Overlord speeds there, Ling's at the front. He sees a pretty standard defensive blink setup. Yeah, so often we think of uh, necessity for scouting as being, well, you gotta scout the all and you gotta scout the cheese. But of course, scouting that they are playing a very macro-oriented game is also important. So if that is what he saw, you know, in the Templar archives being thrown down as well, then maybe he it doesn't worry so much about the upcoming aggression and change the way he plays out the last game. But if he doesn't, and maybe he sees a lot of gateways, and then he gets a little more worried about a true attack on the front lines. We do have Stalkers with the Warp Prism, and this is the changeup now for Hero as he does choose to be quite aggressive with this opener. The Roaches might be a little bit of a surprise. The Lings do not have their upgrade as of yet, but they are getting a very good surround. Hero's plus one did just finish, and he clearly has the Warp Prism Micro to help with the Blink Micro, but he is very much being pushed back. Rainer had a solid army and a solid setup to nip this in the bud. Hero with some great micro, but Rainer punishes him there. I think about four stalkers died, maybe five. It's a decent number. Three, in fact, did go down, and those are very expensive units. Look at Rainer's supply. He's got a Spire on the way as well. I love that. I think Spire is super underrated, and a few of the players have been talking about, uh, of course, Hero and how he does get caught by Mutalisks. Sometimes, you know, there's been the story of how because of his control group system, he can't really micro phoenixes perfectly while defending two ground angles because he's a chaotic player who basically just manually controls stuff. So he, he kind of struggles against those mass mutalisk styles. It's very rare anyone gets there because he normally just kills them if they try to go mutalisks. But because you've defended the first attack, you can definitely sneak the muters out. Which is like a very well-timed first-person view, by the way, because you can see his hockeys. You can see that he has Oracle on the second occasionally, sometimes a probe, and then all of his army on one hockey. Yeah, it, well, the thing is, it's always whatever he looked at most recently on one and two. So the Immortal, he just looked at, it's on number two. Now the Prism's on number two. And if he looks at something else, it'll replace the Stalkers on number one. So it's a constantly rotating way of selecting what he was just selecting. 90% of his control is clicking on the minimap or F2ing and just kind of manually boxing things. It means he's so good at adapting in the chaos. His ability to control messy situations second to none. But it also means the situations which he could calm down and make more organized with a more organized system, but he just does not have the system in place to do that, whereas other pro players do. Well, that's very interesting. Not an excuse to go ahead and just, you know, do the same thing, guys, out there on ladder. Hero is hero, after all. But Infestation Pit is actually on the way. Nice contaminate on the storm prior to the Overseer being sniped. Very nice indeed. But, well, Rainer, uh, yeah, did get Aspire. The Muta count has already been created. It's not going to be an overwhelming number of Mutas. This is going to shock and all, and it will get a lot of damage done. Uh, the intent is to move away from this as the Infestation Pit is happening behind all 
of this aggression. As you can see, a couple of SAG defense structures actually helping negate what could have been, I think, easily 16 probe kills. It's only eight so far. Well, 10 now with a couple of scouting probes, which thankfully did scout that there is a very much ground-based attack happening on the right side. Safe Strap is ready. SAG defense is ready. Storm is not, thanks to that contaminate. But one second to go there it is. And Rainer won't get that timing there, but he might still be able to get the big surround or not. That Storm on the left side catches all the banelings rolling, pulling in a line. And that was not the attack that Rainer was open for. Hero is looking cool, calm and collected. And he just got past the scariest part of this game. He has four bases and 73 workers up and rock solid. Hero feeling like he does not need to make a play happen. We're seeing him come into this series after watching Reina's series against Showtime. And he says, you know what? I think I can I can also take him in late game. Let's copy that more defensive style. Let's be a bit more chill after the early harassment. It is so unlike Hero to play StarCraft like this. But sitting on four base and just going Stargates, this is perfect against the way Reina's been playing this tournament so far. The pressure is on. The Italian Stallion struggling to find an opening. I would like to see Reina being able to match him as far as the pace set to that late game and we do have the spire obviously for this game so big difference from the last and then we also see we already have a greater spire as rainer has recognized the time for trying to overwhelm or out multitask its opponent with the ground and mutas as a uh, it's passed you know we're getting into that later stage of the game where rainer i mean he's very good as well and that's where the true test will lie is late game versus late game plus two air already on the way for hero on that sky toss which is a really good sign for him the four bases obviously completely set up and both players maxing out. But you're right, Rainer really is not able to find the big attacks, and he's also not finding any of these little jabs, which he usually does. The full base setup is so solid on this map, and Hero entrenched it with stasis traps, cannons, and batteries very well. He's moving out to a fifth base on the left as well. The fifth base on, I feel, is when the Protoss becomes a little more vulnerable to Zerg run by us. That's when Rainer could maybe get some more movement going. So far, though, it is uh, his attempts are falling on deaf ears. He's basically running and shouting and screaming, and the cannons are ignoring him. They are blocking it so easily. Yeah, yeah, they are. A drill glance will eventually finish, and that will add a little bit more potency to the lane run buys. But I think he needs a few more if he actually wants to find some damage and cause some chaos. We have many a carrier on the way. Again, fairly well upgraded. Painlings were formed, actually. So are going to be able to crash on through, take out some tag defense, and perhaps a follow-up bling attack will continue to uh, put the pressure on that particular point, which is not only necessity, I think, for the momentum of Rainer, really wanting to get something done, but it's also perhaps a necessity for a safe transition to Broodlords. It has begun, but we're trickling those in, so not quite effective yet. Hero may be looking away or not bothering to split. All right, yeah, okay, there we go. He just moved back. Storms are plenty coming down, but after the Immortal Shields had popped and they've been injured, so... I mean, it's a very tough army for the Protoss. It will survive, and as you can see, Rainer's not intent on following up immediately as he is still trying to grow the Broodlord army. Rainer does not have an endless economy at 73 drones for the Zerg. This is not the 100 drones when Rainer feels truly rich. And his unit's lost tab can't be too fantastic either. Not with the efficiency those storms have been gaining. That's definitely something with the Lingbane Roach is going to roam around. Corrupt a Viper for the anti-air. Ultras become key for clearing High Templar. If you can remove Storm, Corrupt a Viper wreck carriers, but there's already a core of Immortals, a few Archons on the ground. That army blocks the Ultras very well. Yeah, no surprise, you know, your High Templar is completely unguarded. That, that will not be happening here. They might still be incorrectly controlled, but that has not yet happened. We do actually have Hero now starting to do a little bit of the run buying, just a handful of Zelda to the left, to the right. I mean, if this really does go into a proper late, late game ZVP, and obviously we talk about the amount of bases that the Zerg is able to take and uh, take all the minerals before the game gets to that low Econ point. War Prism in the main base is going to find some damage. I think this is the first sign of Corruptors. Obviously, the potential for Broodlords is there with the initial Spire. Second Spire on the way for the eventual double upgrades. And it's just perfection on the late game for both players. Double Cybercore for Hero. I mean, that's so sick. He is so well prepared for the late game, going double air upgrades and shields, but he's not obsessing over air, and this is perfect. I've said it before, I'll say it again, Hero is not an air specialist. When he tries to go mass carriers, it doesn't look great. It, he, he tends to just lose those big air battles to the top Zergs like Rainer, but if he gets a few carriers, it makes it so difficult 
for Rainer to balance his army. Yeah. And then you've got this explosive. He's got so many gateways coming in. He's going to be warping in 20 units at a time. Uh, I want to see, you know, Zealot and Dark Templar counterattacks, Archon counterattacks. I, I do think we're probably going to see the Blink Stalker Remax, which is not my favorite thing, but it can work. There was a game that they played recently where Hero was so gung-ho about getting to the late game that he actually had very poor attack upgrades on the ground, mm. which made his transfer over into the gateways really poor. Cause uh, Rainer to have a little bit of a comeback. That's like a be happening here if that is his eventual plan to go back into the gateways. We have the move outs of the Protoss army on the way and very good upgrades for the air. Hero gonna have plus three attack in like 60 seconds on the air. Shield upgrades and the armor thanks to the double Simon X core. Five Archons actually coming in here to help too and it's clear that Raynor is not prepared for the fight. He is willing to evacuate his gold base. If we could see the units lost up for a moment, I'd love to check in before we get to any big late game battles. You can see already a 6,000 resource lost advantage, almost 6,500 in favor of Hero. So we're going to track that as time goes on and see which way that goes. Hero right now throwing some probes away to replace them with a bigger army. Yeah, very much. Intense here on that, and Rainer knows it as well. You can only avoid killing those things for so long if, if you know about it. War Prism gonna find a uh, budding hatchery, and that's not quick enough to a cancel. DT is, of course, making an appearance, and unfortunately for Rainer, he did not anticipate this. No spore and spine quite ready there. Actually, he was quite scared of the scare of the air toss with eight spore crawlers on the way. He made a last second miracle stand in this exact position, in fact. Very similar game in previous best ofs, but it's gonna to be a different attack uh, situation, but there are static defense uh, structures ready to go. Hero is committing to this. Is it going to be the moment oh. to shine? Blinded Cloud abducts the Broodlord so far untouched. Is this Hero's time? Dude, that was amazing micro from Rainer with the Corruptors. He dodged multiple storms, sniped a carry, he gets another one. His Corruptors have only been tickled. And the Blinding Cloud plus Broodlord cleared up a lot of the ground units. I feel that fight went very nicely. You can see there yeah. still a similar units lost gap. And that's way better for Rainer, right? If you're trading evenly, that's much nicer. Absolutely. Rainer still does not have a comfortable bank or even that comfortable of an economic position as he is kind of back on his original four bases. Fifth is currently under fire. Mass Stalker being made. I was saying that is exactly what I didn't want to see in this game. The Mass Stalker Remax, they are a very low tier unit used for remaxing in a like a real messy situation. This game's not that messy, but Hero is making it messy, but I don't think he's really doing that much damage to Rainer. Killing a hatcher is not that worth it, unless he can get all the Broodlords. He's blinking into Ultra Broodlord right now. The Corruptors are killing the air army. Rainer's Corruptors took a lot of storm damage though. He does need to let those heal up, but I think Hero needs to give up on this Stalk attack. That is a dead end. Yeah, the, the blink forward is also just like, oh, okay, uh, enough to army survived, enough reinforcements are on the way. That is, supply never dipped very low, so it was okay, but I think we do have to focus more up on that sky toss. But it's not going to be continued carrier production or transfer over in a Tempest. It's going to be, I like to call it a bit of a gamble oh, on the Void Rays. Another aggressive blink forward that time around, though. The Broodlords were more undefended, so gets a couple of freebies there. Rain are going to struggle to replace them because he really does not have, has never really had the best Zerg economy in this game. And in fact, now it's Hero with the gold base. Not a pleasant sign for Rainer's extractor as it goes down to see that saturated. Hero is lacking ground armor upgrades. He's going to make plus three plasma shields, but having no ground armor means those stalkers are much more fragile. When you have three, three, three stalkers, they do well versus the Broodlords, but without having any armor upgrades, those Broodlings tear through them. Nice fungals on these Void Rays. If you could pick these off, that'd be great for Rainer. Rainer's playing so careful. Parasitic Bomb as well. Corruptor's going in, but the storms scare them off for a moment. Fungals though, and Abdark's being used so well. Rainer is just playing a very efficient late game. And oh my gosh, Hero is just going mass Blink Stalker, the mad lad. Yeah, absolutely mad. This is a very interesting way to try and complete the game. Great fungal on top of most of the Protoss army. Storm going to definitely damage some Broodlords, but not actually get those finalizing kills. I'm looking more at the Corruptors, however, is there in the orange and red and got stormed again. But the Stalkers were completely dismissed from any form of actual punish on the fourth base as Ling's Ultras and even the Roaches were still there to help out. Hero not quite finding that moment to strike. Though with all the Corruptors constantly in the orange and red, I am concerned that there's one or two storms away from total destruction. Don't like the sign of that, but Hero is so aggressive, so on point, he just continues to cause issues. Finally, I think for the first time in a while, truly backing away with the majority of his army, just leaving some gate units, I believe, to aggress. 
Or uh, we're going to get a sign on the, yeah, stalkers. That's all it was. So not the biggest concern. If we can check the unit's loss tab uh, again, you can see it's closing a little bit. Only about 4,000 difference. Problem, Hero is mining the bottom left corner. Yeah. So he's sucking up a lot of those valuable resources in one of the kind of sp the split bases, the ones in the middle. The top right base has been untouched by either player. But if either one can secure the two corner bases, they're going to win the game. Unless the other player just, you know, pulls a rabbit out of a hat. There's no way. Dodging fungals again. Heroes being so annoying with the Stalkers. But in any pitched battle, the Stalkers are one of the worst units in the game. For their cost, they are absolute garbage. And that is why we don't want to see a max on those Stalkers. We just want to see him looking for efficiency where he can. And that is, that's not efficiency. <laughs> that is, that is a, a not efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what that is. That's all the soccer's there. <laughs> Thanks to a couple of fungals. The Void Ray is trying to go for a little run by here. Still finding, again, injured Corruptors, but there are so many of them. They are kind of doing the tackle job pretty nicely. Mothership tries to come in with a little cloaking field now, but there was an Overseer and Hero. Well, it's now getting a bit of a taste of his own medicine, kind of, which is like he's trying to poke, he's trying to prod, he even tries to go for an actual game ending attack, but it's not working. Rainer seems indestructible at that phase, where earlier on in the mid game, it was Hero that was indestructible. Now Rainer trying to get something done about the continued expansion process of the Protoss. Not going to find a lot of success here. Too many reinforcements, too much tag defense. And even oh. losing a couple of infestors, I believe literally a couple, a fungal will come in and that will be another loss of stalkers for Hero, but he is the one with a bit more of the bank and he did just save yet another base from destruction. Those stalkers are expensive. They are not cheap units. You can see now Rainer has closed most of that gap. The Mama gets abducted. Viper does go down in revenge, but that's still a great catch for Rainer. Rainer is still stuck in his corner with limited mining. Not that much bank, though. He's got to keep being careful. He can't get too ahead of himself. Great fungals on those High Templar, pinning them in place. If the Broodlords can get on top, that could be massive. Those High Templar are so low. Ooh, okay, two of them are going to get that uh, very crucial final fungal. And Pop and the Tempest also getting fungled on their attempted retreat, but Storm still covering their butts as the Corrupt absolutely want to give chase and actually it's here once again going for the stalkers trying to go for the blink forward with a couple of storms still left over Raider migrant trying to use the broodlings as a literal wall but here's the true wall which is the ling ultra it doesn't want to go up against that ramp and now we have both players saying that's enough let's pack away for a hot second he just stormed 26 times and still has like 10 storms in the bank <laughs> how many high templar did he build i saw at least six high templar die in that fight he's still got nine left this is a ridiculous amount of storm that Hero's investing in. I kept thinking the storm's gonna run out. The Corruptor Ling's gonna clear his army. No, apparently I was wrong. Hero has a ridiculous amount of size storm in this army. Yeah, very, very important that he did. It did help him a lot, guarding his retreat in the air as well as on the ground, as well as getting a couple of feedbacks. It actually killed the Viper and was obviously looking to take out some of the Infestors from the equation, but the Infestors are also still here. The Corruptors are still alive, but again, heavily injured. Hero's just relentless with the equation. Aggression. Rainer gonna try and make one last stand, but those storms are still in the pocket of Hero. He is pushing forward into Rainer's fourth base. It's not about efficiency, it is about leaning on your opponent when you have the advantage, and that is exactly what Hero is doing here. But has he overextended? The Ultra's looking for the High Templar. The High Templar desperately trying to get away. The air unit's getting hunted down by the Corruptors. Rainer has no bank. His Ultras get on top of those High Templar. He clears them. He starts to break through the Tempest line as well. Rainer with an amazing hold from a terrible position, but he's working with the dregs of a Zerg army, Zombie Grub. He's got so little money. Yeah, Hero still has 75 probes and still a couple of fresh bases mining. Literally two, I believe, at this point, as that gold is entirely mined out to the bottom left. Hero going for the stock remax as well, or close to the remax as he can get. It's going to be very good against the remaining Ultras. They just got popped in. Rainer, you can see it. He's not feeling very confident about this game because of the lack of bank. He really needs to be way more cost efficient than his opponents, and he was unable to do so. Now trying to get some cracklings onto the field to take care of these stalkers and maybe hopefully get into the nooks and crannies of some of these mineral lines, but he's far cry away from that. He is actually just not able to replenish his supply the same way that Hero does. He just got an advantage in the mineral income, and just as that happens, Zealot's coming to snipe one of his ever important bases. Stalkers on the right as well! No! Oh, Raider losing both of his most important bases! Hero with a brutal
Total double snipe. It's his signature move. Diving in and sniping your bases. I mean, he pays a hefty price. He loses a lot of stalkers. But Rainer, suddenly now you can see he's way behind in the income. And that is such a painful way to go. He fought like a hero from behind. He took down so many of the Protoss units. But Hero knew how to waste his energy by attacking everywhere. Raiding out those fungals with the stalkers, and he just would not stop leaning on his opponent. Amazing aggression by Hero. Yeah, and Rainer is just so disappointed, particularly, I mean, for the overall uh, problem that has been presented itself. But because the Corruptors, they're not high enough in numbers to tackle any amount of the Sky Toss that Heroes get backing into. So the Lings are really his last bet here to try and change this game around. The Lings can get into every single base if they can get the probes, get the technology, get the production, keep Hero on Hero's side of the map. Maybe Rainer could recover, but without a fresh base of mining, it just seems so unlikely. And again, that camera really telling the tale. He knows that if he loses this 0-2, and he's basically out of the groups. He's not going to make it further in Katowice, and that is just not the result that anyone expected. Not at all. Uh, of course, Rainer there looking a bit dejected, realizing that Hero just has too much money coming in, too many tools. The borrowed Zergling harassment has been stopped. Hero, you can see here, getting a bit more efficiency in the tail end once he broke through against Rainer. 5,000 resource loss advantage for Hero, and of course, a massive mining advantage for him. He's got the mix. High Templar, carriers, and Archons on the ground, of course. A few Zealots and Stalkers mixed in. He also ended up eventually adding a ground armor upgrade, plus three shields, plus three ground attack, three, three air upgrades for armor and attack. And this new hatchery, the only hatchery he's got, your parasite comes down, but he can just pull away. Yeah, there's still so much more supply. If this was in 30 or 40 supply, Neural Parasite sites could be huge, spellcasters could be huge, but you can see despite everything being thrown at Hero, Rainer simply does not have enough. The GG is called and Hero will get a decisive 2-0 against Rainer. It is not easy to break a Zerg player when they lock themselves down and try to turtle up.